adage about how it's not so good uh, to look closely at how public policy is made because it's kind of like going to the sausage factory. Uh, it's certainly been true in this instance. <laughs> but we're here to tell you how the sausage actually was made in this case. And it's a very interesting story with many twists and turns, many ups and downs, many moments of triumph that turned into dismay because something that seemed to be happening wasn't, but ultimately a success story that the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act is now the law. Advocates have been fighting to pass the GINA Act for 12 years. During this time, the genome was mapped and new mutations were discovered. But we're still vulnerable to discrimination based on our DNA. And there are a lot of heroes of this story, and I'll try to mention a few of them along the way, but I'm sure I won't mention all of them. Some of them work in your institute. Uh, some of them work in the United States Congress. Uh, some of them work in the advocacy community trying to make the case for this. Uh, some of them you've heard of, some of them you have not. But it really took that kind of team effort of a remarkably dedicated group of individuals over a very long period of time uh, to see this dream come true. The Coalition for Genetic Fairness is a critical part of this success story. Hundreds of diverse organizations worked side by side raising awareness, and keeping the hope alive. They supported the dynamic and unrelenting leadership of our congressional heroes. Madam Speaker, the story of humanity is defined by extraordinary achievements that centuries later are looked upon as having impacted the course of human history. Five years ago, we saw one of these distinguishing achievements, the mapping out of the human genome, a discovery that pries open the door of possibility and presents an opportunity to advance the human race. The breakthrough in the field of genetics joins the ranks of momentous discoveries that have changed the face of medicine and science for centuries to come, like the discovery of the polio vaccine so many years ago. And it's, and it's just a, a, a great day that we are here now, and it, has, it seems like it's been a long, long road the, to this. When you've got three committees uh, uh, of jurisdiction uh, on the House side and, and various committees on the uh, Senate side to get all of these uh, committees together to come up with a bill, to craft a bill that everybody can agree on, and everybody will benefit by it. Uh, it's, it's just uh, a great Someday day. Someday is coming, and I hope it's soon, when people will get the right answer all the time to that question. When the cure will be here, the pain will be gone, and the hope will prevail. What will happen in a few hours will benefit people around the world for years to come. This is a singular achievement. That from this day forward, the principles of preventive medicine, the reduction of health care costs, the advancement of research, and the saving of lives will be the order of the day. I honestly believe that being here in Congress for 22 years, which has meant so much to me and for which I am so grateful to my constituents, that this piece of legislation and what we have done here is the most important thing that I shall ever do in my life and certainly in my time as a legislator. Today the Senate is considering uh, the first major new civil rights bill of the new century. Uh, five years ago this week we celebrated a milestone that once seemed unimaginable, the completion of the Human Genome Project, which sequenced and mapped all the genes in the human body. And this Friday is DNA Day when we pay tribute to this amazing accomplishment, which was the dawn of a new era in the life sciences. Mapping the human genome has provided extraordinary insights for modern medicine and has opened the door to an immense new opportunities to prevent, to diagnose, and treat and cure disease. And its discovery may well affect the 21st century as profoundly as the invention of the computer or the splitting of the atom affected uh, the 20th century. We are on the threshold of a new era without question because for the first time we act to prevent discrimination before it has taken firm hold. And that's why this legislation is unique and groundbreaking. In the past, Congress has acted to address existing discrimination. But with this bill, we are making a statement and taking a stand and saying as we look to the future, the genetic discrimination will not be allowed to flourish, to take root, to stand be between Americans and the vast potential 
that genetic information can provide for a greater quality of the life. The Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act recognizes that discrimination based on a person's genetic identity is just as unacceptable as discrimination on the basis of race or religion. As science and medicine hurl headlong into the 21st century, we have a responsibility to ensure our laws keep pace to ensure the benefits of this extraordinary era of advancements that can be realized by everyone without penalty. Mr. President, we know that there are numerous barriers to new discoveries that Congress can do little about. The complexities of disease, the uncertainties of science, and the rarity of true inspiration. But this one, uh, this one major problem that is entirely within our power to solve, we can make a difference and we can do it today. As I sign the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, it's a piece of legislation which prohibits health insurers and employers from discriminating on the basis of genetic information. In other words, it protects uh, our citizens from having genetic information misused. And this bill does so without uh, undermining the basic tenets of the insurance industry. And now it's my honor to sign the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act. This bill is being hailed as really the first civil rights bill of the new century by uh, proponents of this bill. I want to mention just some of the other people, uh, Mr. President, and then send, just say a final word. Uh, Dr. Collins, who's been the leader of the Human Genome Project, who's been such a strong voice in passing this uh, legislation. Sharon Terry, who's the director of the Genetic Alliance. Uh, Kathy Hudson, who works at NIH and gave us excellent technical assistance. Representative Slaughter, long time uh, commit, uh, uh, committed to this uh, program. And I have to say, in terms of the heroic figures here in the Congress, uh, certainly in the House, uh, Congresswomen Slaughter and Biggert uh, maintained their strong support for this, despite many people saying, just give it up, it's not going to happen. But in the Senate, I think we particularly have to recognize Senator Ted Kennedy, who, as the person on the Democratic side who had been the greatest supporter of this bill and whose staff, particularly David Bowen, I had worked tirelessly over many years uh, to try to craft language that would be acceptable but still effective, uh, really make, made this happen in ways that I think a less dedicated uh, senator and a less dedicated staff uh, would have given up on. I would like to say thank you to all of these people pictured here and all the others uh, who aren't in the picture who've played a role in this. What a team effort it was and, and what a happy outcome this is where science and policy get together and make an outcome that protects the American public so that people don't have to be afraid of finding out information about their own DNA. Mm -hmm.